just in, in the past for a couple of these ornaments, I've really struggled to try and find an ornament that I thought I could do during this uh, this session and stuff. And um, this year, I I had looked through an awful lot of different YouTubes and and everything um, to try and get an ornament. But all of a sudden, this thing came to me, and part of it is if you remember. The last time I was here, the piece that the um, demonstrator didn't like <laughs> was that the urchin bowl with all the spikes. Well, I got pretty comfortable turning spikes because that had a thousand of them. So what I decided to start doing was, why don't I do something with spikes? <clears throat> and so oh, you can make a little... Um, a little star. Now, and this is not solid. All right. One of the things I always have in mind when I'm trying to make an ornament is keep it light as possible. So I try and use light woods. So what you'll see is mainly cherry and some maple. Um, I won't be using oak and stuff like that. Um, but what happened to me as I was doing this is thinking about the tremendous variety of things you can do with this concept okay so this is a five-pointed star contrasting colors textured what I call this the hubcap all right textured hubcap all right so then I thought okay if I can do five I can do ten but there's going to be math tonight <laughs> Sorry, but it's just the way it is. So if I'm going to do 10, all right, the hub has to be bigger in order to, to do all of that. And again, this is one with a hub cap. Um, so, you know, I had to make the hub bigger, the hub cap bigger, and all of that. But then I thought, okay, I can add a little color. Uh, I can do a hubcap where now I just do a little insert that's a little fatter than the hubcap is. So it's so when you think about it, there's a million things you can do, and I'll, I have some example that maybe I'll put one together here. All right, um, why I say math is involved. Everybody remember that? No. C equals pi D? No. no. <laughs> pi times the diameter. Why is the circumference and diameter important? All the spikes are half inch diameter. All right? If I want 10 of them to nestle up against each other around a hub, I have to know how to big to make this hub so that 10 half inches will fit around. <coughs> All right? So that's the part that I need to figure out the circumference. So if I have 10 and these are half inch, that's 5 inches. All right? So 5 inches divided by pi tells me the diameter of the hub. Mm -hmm. All right? That's if I want them to touch. If I want a little space in between, all right, then I got to add a little to it. So now it's not five inches, maybe it's six inches divided by pi. So now I'm getting closer to an inch and a half or inch and five eighths, something like that. But it's just, you don't want to go through all this effort and making all of these, um, these, these spikes and then not be able to fit them around the hub and have to throw, start all over with a new hub. So this is the only one you need to do, C equals pi D. You need the circumference to, to work out, based on the number of spikes you do, what that circumference is. That circumference then tells you the diameter of the hub. All right? If you say. Yeah. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, bake the hub. 
And as most of you know, I do a lot of spindle turning and I do a lot of smaller spindle turning. So I'm just, I use these jaws a lot, all right? So you may not have step jaws or, or, or um, spigot jaws, but I use this kind a lot. So you're going to take a piece of wood in there. I will say one thing that's also good to do is, you know, it's tough to do this with a 12 inch tool rest. So that's all pretty straightforward here, you know. Well, that's pretty good. So I've set this to a, a diameter that I think, the, the other thing that you have to be concerned about when you make the hub, the hub has to have enough robustness that, that I'm gonna drill into here, all right? To put my, the tenons for the spikes. Um, I'm doing these very short, all right, so the tenons are really quite short so they don't, so that they don't, um, you, 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 if I did them deeper or the tenons longer and I had to drill this bigger, what you'd end up doing is have the spike of the brad point drill coming through. I can't really do them solid because I can do the front side great. Doing the back side is more complicated because how do I hold the back side without marking it up to, to do all the sanding and whatever I need to do on the back side. So I'm always going to drill a hole and I'll show you what, how I deal with that. So this has to be robust enough. So if, I, if this is an inch, which is pretty much what I did, all of them are maybe an inch and an eighth for the smaller ones, the smaller ornaments. I want this at least a quarter of an inch or maybe five sixteenths. So in this case, I know I'm, I'm using a half inch Forstner bit to go through there. And that'll give me a quarter inch wall on both ends, all right? Um, I may want to make, if I'm using a wood <coughs> that's maybe a little bit more brittle, or oh, you gotta use a reasonable wood. You can't really use punky wood because this will just, if you've got this many holes cut in it, that's problematic. The other thing that I'm, I was doing on one of these two is that, actually what I was doing was making these long enough, to ex drilling that hole and making them long enough to extend it to here and then I was going to drill out the whole thing, and then I'd have a series of dots on the inside. But you think about this, if I'm spaced this far apart out here, because I'm going in this diameter smaller, I'm almost touching in there. So I'm really, the integrity of that wood has to be pretty good. So I'm, this is holly, I think. Uh, I also used uh, a hard maple for the hub. All right, I tried some out of some, uh, Spalted sweet gum and it just just kind of disintegrated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get myself a pretty even surface. It can also help me with the diameter. It's a little, this is a little small. In fact, let me go back there. Muscle memory's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and this used to be my lay, or I had a lay very similar to this. So 
I'm going to part this off because I want to get a bigger diameter than this one down here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get that nub out of the center. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to I'm going to take this down a little bit so I can get that fit over. And I'll show you why in a minute. In fact, yeah, so it's not much. And um, so I make this about a half an inch. And I'm going to mark, it's arbitrary, all right? I can make this wider. I could actually make this step. There's a number of different things I can do. So if I... Uh, Say that's a half inch, I'm going to mark the center. And then to give me a little more positive reinforcement of where that is, I'm just going to go ahead and mark with my skew, make a little cut in that center. All right, I'm going to stay on the front. And now, there's two steps I can do now. One of them is I can, and that's how I did a number of these to start, and that's I marked it all out, and I did the drilling of these holes on the drill press. And so just swivel around. I'm not going to do that, I, I, but I want to show you. Okay. But what I do on my table, on my drill press table, is I take a piece of wood like this and clamp it to the table, all right, so that when this comes down, I, just, I cut off the, this hub, so I have the hub, all right, I have it marked to where I want to cut, and I just hold it against here and just slowly bring this down and make the cut, turn it to the next slot, and move. All right, and that's how I do it all the way around. That gets me a couple of things. One, it's slow. I got my drill press set up at a slow speed. You know that the drill is going to come down vertical, so I don't have to worry about whether they're going to tilt to the front or to the back. And what I can do, that's by resting it against here, and then what I can do is just, when I'm doing this, make sure that the drill, when I put the hub on here, that it's lined up so that the drill's going towards the center. All right, and that keeps me from cocking it from one side to another. And that works pretty good. And um, I was happy with those results, but I didn't think I was going to be able to do it here. <laughs> This is a pretty common situation when you go to drill the hub because you've got ingrain and side grain. All right? And if I use a brad point drill, if I forget that I'm going into the end grain and I'm pushing a little too hard, it cracks for sure. I did a bunch of them. Or if I did them and then a day later came back to it, forgot that I have to be really gentle, all right? And I set the stop oh. on the drill press that it goes in just as deep as I want the tenon, no more, all right? So what I'm gonna do here, however, 
is I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the drilling on the lathe. So what's one of the things you need to do? If I'm doing it off of the lathe, I end up with a ring like this. Okay, ring like this. So you end up with a with a hub like this when you part it off, and now you've got to mark the uh, the, the segments on it. So what I do is I just went online um, and googled uh, octagonal uh, oct octagonal drawings, I think, pentagonal drawings, hexagonal. You know, so you, you just pull these off, all right, print them out. I, I set them on a table. I set this down on top. I line up, I put the hub so it is right in the center, you know, yeah. all right? <laughs> and then I'm just going around the top and doing And I'll work my way around. And then that, I'll transfer the mark from the side to the, um, center you can already see there was that score mark that I used before and I know right where that is and I'll take my automatic punch and I'll just make a mark and so now I'm set for drill and this is this is what I would have taken over to the drill press okay and drilled it and this is where you know, jeez. This is where I said, oh, I do five, but it happens to have ten markings, so why don't I do the next one ten? You know, here's one that's eight, but it's got 16. I decided not to do a 16 point of stuff. Um, and what I ended up with is I liked eight. I liked eight stars around for the size hub I was doing, the size spikes I was doing. But man, the flexibility here. You can make these thinner spikes, fatter spikes, longer spikes, shorter spikes, whatever you want, and just adjust the hub uh, appropriately, okay? So, on here though, how do I transfer it from that drawing onto here? I tried, but I'm telling you, doesn't work real well. So what I did is I set this down. I made a ring bigger diameter. Did that, put the marks on this, and there I go. So now I have the marks right where I need them. So there I am. Now, I'm pretty happy with, with that. Now I need to do my, uh, my punch and go around. See that having that groove in there really helps because it puts me right where I need to be between the two edges. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Now, have any, do any of you have a drill master? You know what that is? Fits in the post. It's a big assembly. 
and Scott, you, you mount a, a portable dr or a, 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 a drill on an electric drill. You mount it all in. It's got a lever. Shh. Too much. Too much indexing. Too much. You know. Yes, I'm doing eight. Um, is uh, most lays nowadays are 24. So I would have to do every third. I find that these lines are a little bit just easier. Um, the issue now, though, what I do have on the drill press is I don't have here is I have a depth stop, right, on the drill press. How do I control how deep I drill this? Because I don't want to go through. I can't control the depth. If I take a piece of wood, and drill the hole through it. I can control how much of that sticks out at the end. And I can adjust that by moving the, the drill in and out. All right. So now, what I need to do is get that, the brad point, the point of the brad point in. And I'm aiming this thing towards the center. Oh, oh it slipped. No, oh, it didn't. You gotta go in deeper. Yeah, I'm gonna make it come out a little bit more. So I just bring out the drill a little bit more. And again, I've left, I haven't drilled it out yet, okay? This gives me less chance of splitting out when I, as I'm drilling. By the way, this is exactly how I did all of the all the holes for the urchin bowl. Um, and what I did, I adjusted the diameter of this, so I set that next to two spikes that were in there, and then drilled it. Set that spike, and then set so it gave me the distance apart I needed for that. All right, so there I am. See if I can knock anything else down right now. I want to uh, just give myself a little reference to where the edge of the hub is. I want to sand it. So now I want to come up and drill out the center. sand in here a little bit. And if you're going to put hubcaps on, 
don't bother, you know. All right, and then okay, and then I uh, I'll just turn off the hub. All right, so here I am with a hub. It, you can see all those holes have been drilled. And I got two that kind of got close together. But, but I also have this side as rough. This is the side I just parted off. So how am I going to fix that? So that's another one of the things that woodworking, wood turning is all about. Is how do I hold that damn thing on the lathe? <coughs> oh, good. All right. So all I make is a little stub tenon. Oh. I gotta make that a little bigger. You obviously don't want to jam that on. Mm -hmm. All right. So there I am with the the other side. I can sand that, sand the inside a little bit. And there's my hub duck. So now I'm I'm ready to go. And I gotta turn my spikes. So I've standardized all my spikes at a half an inch. So one of the things when I'm doing this, I don't put these over here before they fall down. One of the things that I, I like to do to save some time and some wood, all right, is I like to turn multiples. And uh, we were talking, was I talking to about that before? Yeah. And that uh, where I can turn a number of things without having to rechuck. So, on, since I'm going to be turning it a spike, and with a point on this end, I can't use any tailstock support. I could for this bit right now. But I found that with this chuck, with this buried this deep, a six and a half inch piece of wood stuck out this far, I can generally turn uh, without an excessive amount of vibration out here. If you get too much vibration on a piece of wood you're using or whatever, you turn two instead of three. All right. I usually turn this somewhere over 2,000 usually, but I'll do it 1,300 tonight. This is a little bigger than a half inch, but I'm going to use a half inch wrench as my, not much. And this will give you some witness marks down. Once I get that close, it's a skew usually, and it's just a... All 
right and I, you know, you can if you want, you can sand it, but you're going to virtually take all of this away. You're going to have virtually none of this surface showing. So I usually don't. Now, the next step is I want, I want to be able, well, just to make sure, all right, so that's a half inch. There's not very much wiggle room there. So now I want to be able to make sure each one of these is the same. So I just make myself a little reference template, all right? Um, it's from this edge to here for the long one. There's actually a mark in here from here to here for short ones. So I'll just hold that up there. And uh, Actually, for this, I use a. If sometimes on this last one I don't. Sometimes I use just a steel. But normally, I'll use a a rough and gouge, and then I'll take my bigger skew. And I do that because I like a bigger skew with that, with the bevel being a little bit um, longer here. I can maintain a contact more all the way down the this slope, okay? And then I'll come back and I'll make a, a reference mark. and I'll cut my tenon. Now that's, this tenon is the most critical piece. If you make it too big, it won't fit in the hub. If you make it too loose, you gotta glue it and hold it and all that junk, so. I uh, am using Oh, I just made it too small. So uh, here I'm telling you, you have to be really careful. Oh no, it's all right. Um, tell you what, it looks like that moved in transit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, set this caliper against the shaft of the drill bit. So this is a, I said 730 seconds drill bit. I liked it better than quarter inch was just too big for this. So yeah, that's way small. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm back in here, and now I gotta turn the back part of the spike. Um, that's the one cut, you know, it takes a little practice. Um, but I will say that it's a really good cut to learn. Um, especially if you're making beads and stuff like that. Being able to make that cut with a skew is you can do it with a gouge, you can do it with a spindle gouge, that's fine, but I just like it with uh, how easy it is. If I'm sitting here cranking these out, you see I'm making a pretty short hub. I mean tenon. And then I cut off the little Nub that's left. And I go on to the next one. And this one, if I've left a little, not this little dinky thing, 
but if it's sticking out here a little bit, that's where I measure from. <coughs> Okay. I can get a little more aggressive now because it's being supported better. Now one thing you have to remember, if you're doing eight, you do seven of them like I just did. One of them you have to make for the hanger. Alright? So what I do with that one... Just made a little divot, and now take my little dental tool, just poke that in, and that's where the uh, screw eye is screwing. All right, so now I'm back to where I was. Let me. Let me mark this. Let me do a better job with this thing. Yep. If you notice the grip, this really helps to make this cut. And I've, t t for any of you that have been with me learning something, you'll notice that I always am using this grip when I'm doing skewer or, or um, even spindle work, gouge work. My finger is under the tool rest, my thumb is on the top, my three fingers wrap the bottom of the skew, my thumb is a stop to keep it from going this way, my fingers keep it from going that way. So now, I can get myself a really nice control cut on this surface. I want to maybe want to do one more final check. Oh, that's fine. So now I'm going to make that small pen. Cut off the nub. And I'm going to do one more. Alright, so there I'm ready to go. That'll fit in there. Fine. Yeah. Um, now, this is pretty far back in here. I don't have enough room, enough real estate. So, if I'm careful when I take this out, I can loosen it and pull it out. You don't have to get it exactly. Be 
because again, the top of that, most of it's going to be turned away. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, all this gets turned off. This is all going to be turned into that part of that spike. I might decide to come down to a little, a little farther on this thing. Alright, so I'm going to take my this time I'm going to take my paper here and mark it the other direction. I'll part this off. And now I'll go ahead and... I'm picking a spot. You can't really tell, but most of them are about the same. And if I wanted to... I could make a mark on here that says I want to start the spike about here, you know? I could make that mark. And so I would always start in the same place. But it's not too hard to see where on this I need to start to get a, a nice shape of the spike. Alright, and again, I'm going to I could do this all with my smaller skew. That would be all right. But since I have to uh, use two. Now, If I wanted it to stick through this, the hub to, into the center and then drill it out and stuff, I'd have to make one, you know, that long. That's a good one. So you can see that if you do a fair number of these, the process gets simpler and simpler. You get you get that muscle memory going, and it's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that that's sweet, and it works once you get it. And since they're all the same diameter, I'll, I'll cut this off now. So there I am with a long spike. I've done a, a number of shorter spikes. Is it's fine up where I measured it, and it's a little big. Pass it. There we go. So, this is what I was talking about. Where you make it long enough for them to go through, I'd remount this and then re-drill it with this bit, all right? And let's try it. I don't know if it'll work, but I wouldn't normally have taken it off the lathe, but since I had to do this other stuff. One of the other things I do is on something that's this size, I could use a regular chuck. And so I have about 
four or five chucks. So um, if I've got something here that I want to be able to remount, it stays on the chuck. I never take it off. If I am going to take it off, I generally mark where's the number one jaws at. So theoretically, I can get it back here. Let's slow this down a bit. They are not. Out of the line of fire. Yes, normally I would have glued them in first. Somebody got the camera rolling. So there is, there is, so can you see that? In there? So that's kind of an interesting effect as well, all right? Where I've got the, you, you're gonna have a series of cherry dots on a maple hub, or this is a holly hub, all right? Save some measure. Yeah, and so, but I have to make longer tenons where all the tenons are really the right size and all that stuff. I normally, when I did the, the urchin bowl, all those tenons were a quarter of an inch. And you can get a quarter inch wrench like this, all right? So that's how I did all the tenon sizing. But this is 730 seconds. You don't, have, you don't find a wrench like this in 730 seconds without a special order. So, um, and how many spikes did you have on that urchin bowl? A thousand. <laughs> so there is there is muscle memory involved. You know, I, I'm not kidding. Um, it was the same move over and over again. I did them in batches of 72 because that's how many clothespins I had to hold them up to paint them. Um, now, one of the things that you, you there's a, I'll, I'll do one more, oh, here's one thing I wanted to talk about. Here's a solid hub, all right? So pretty straightforward, did it the same thing, didn't drill anything out, went ahead and just put some decoration on this side. How do I deal with this side, you know? I could put it in here, but it's, and it may not be a problem, but it's going to leave grooves from the jaws in here. And I, you know, if you put tape around it and all that stuff, um, it, it just, you're not gonna mount it on there straight. And so, when I thought about it, I said, maybe a solid hub, it would give me better chance of drilling it without, without it breaking, but ha having that jam chuck to be able to turn that hub around and sand the other side made a lot of sense. So that's when I went to drill it before I take out the center of the hub because it, it doesn't really split that way. All right, but then there's a number of other things that I'll, I'll do one more thing here. I'll put one together for you and then um, I'll do one more thing. And that's um, If I can, jeez, they're on the fly. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah. 
Just eat the toys. That's a lot of work. So this one I'm going to do a little different. Once they're sanded up. <laughs> one thing I need to remember to do is to glue in the one for the uh, hanger. And then the last thing I want to show you. Um, to make a hubcap for this. So I know that it's got to be bigger than that. That's going to be my my tenon that has to go in there. But I want to make, I'll do that later. First one I want to do is turn it to the right diameter. So I want to make it bigger than the hole, but I don't want to make it so big that it goes out to the edge or past the edge. I'll do two treatments here for you. This will be one. measure the tenon. down 
You know, you got less of a chance of, of a catch when you do that. You could use a, a spiraling tool or a knurling tool. I think I can't find it. Now for this, I normally like to do it, you know, maybe 500 RPM or something like that. So there's a nice little design. And now I want to do one outline. It's a little point tool. Now the trick, of course, is making the other side to match this one, you know? So I'm probably not going to do that, because you get the idea. You know? So I don't need much to hang on to, all right? So I use my eighth inch party tool to make that part. And then I'm going to use my 16th inch to part it off. And if things are correct, that just fits on there and just glue that on there. And now you have a, a way to hide anything inside. It's, you know, you, you there's air in here, so it's lighter than if you would have made that a solid piece, okay? So that's one thing, and then I'll do one more, and then we're done. So again, this is the inside diameter. Here. Now you take your hub. Here, good. And, uh, just take off a little more of this tail end. So now I want to mark on this other side. And uh, now I didn't 
bring another smaller drill bit. But what I do now is all I would do is drill this out. I'd leave a maybe an eighth of an inch wall. All right. Drill that out. And then part it off. And I've got that one like that one that like this one. Where I've got the inner hub extending past the outer hub and again it hides anything inside and it leaves airspace so again you've done a maximum amount of lightning uh, I didn't sand these after and I didn't you know spray them up more than just once so but what did you, is that just with uh, cam spray you yeah, the red and your greens no the red and the green I airbrushed oh, um, okay. I used uh, iridescent green and iridescent red no, not iridescent. I use metallic green and metallic red. And uh, I like I like the metallics. I'm not sure I would do the, I'm not sure I like the silver in here. But, you know, you can play with all kinds of color. And you could, you know, you can draw out one of these, um, even if you use stylized things, make a couple of copies, and then try all kinds of different combinations and different spike sizes and different wood types or whatever. So the concept is very, very flexible, you know. So um, that's it. Something to try. Thank you.